my name is Marty. I use they, them pronouns. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite topics, which is the difference between measuring by weight and measuring by volume. Um, so I've talked about it a little bit in the past that uh, I prefer to measure by weight when I can because it tends to be more accurate that, you know, weight is weight. Uh, 12 ounces of flour is 12 ounces of flour, no matter how far it's spread out in a bowl. Uh, versus cups, teaspoons, things like that can be a little more uneven. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of that today. Um, we're going to do flour, we're going to do baking soda, and then we're going to talk a little bit about water and liquids as a whole. Alright, so the first one we're going to do is flour. And I know it's kind of hard to see right now. Um, I got glare coming in from the window. I assure you I've like messed around with the camera to try and find the best angle. This is the best angle, unfortunately. Um, but I have my scale down here on the counter, which I've talked about a little bit in the past and I've shown for a couple different recipes in the past that there's a few different buttons on it. There's the power and the tear button, which means to zero it out. And then there's also the unit button. So the different buttons do different things. Obviously, power button turns it on. So you can see as it's getting ready. Yeah, so it's gonna say zero. So if I, it's going a little crazy because my hand's holding it at a weird angle um, and I'm putting pressure on it. Um, so if I put pressure on this, if I put like any weight on it, it's going to change what it says. So yeah, see how that number is climbing and climbing and climbing. So what you want to do is if you're measuring stuff in a bowl, you're going to put your bowl on it first and then you're going to hit that tear button, which is the zero button. So like, I'm going to show you a little bit how to do that. So I'm actually switching to filming with my phone for a sec, as you can see my setup here with the toaster. Um, but yeah, you can see how it says zero ounces, and then I'm going to put the bowl on it, and the laptop's resting on it, so it's throwing it off a little bit, but yeah, then it says 13.4, so what I want to do is I want to hit that tear button, which is going to zero it out, so now it says zero, and if I take that off, it says negative 13.4, so that's going to be like, if I'm trying to measure, oh, there we go. So that's going to be helpful, like if I'm trying to measure like, you know, one ounce of flour, I can take my flour and put it in and it's just going to measure the flour. I'm not going to have to do math on like how much the bowl weighs versus like subtracting it and stuff like that. Um, so that's a pretty good tool to use. The other tool that's on here, the other button is the unit button. So I'm going to get that flour out of there. The other button is the unit button, uh, which is going to let you change from like ounces to pounds to milliliters to grams. Um, we'll talk about each of those a little bit in a couple minutes too. But, so right now it's on ounces, then it's milliliters, which is a liquid measurement. Uh, and I don't use that one a lot, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, there's grams, there's pounds, and then we're back to ounces. Alright, I'm going to switch back to the bigger camera. Well that was fun. Uh, switching around cameras. So, all right, we're going to get right into it with flour first and foremost. Um, so, King Arthur Flour is a really good re uh, website for recipes in general. King Arthur is just a brand of flour. Um, they have a little bit of everything. Uh, and they have an article talking about this as well that's really helpful. And the way that they uh, define, like, the average weight of a cup of flour is 4.25 ounces. So right now we're zeroed in, um, we did the bowl. Uh, so I'm gonna try and see if I can get exactly 4.25 ounces from the measuring cup. Now I'm gonna do that two ways. The first one, I'm gonna scoop it. And the second one, I'm gonna spoon and level it, which is what I've done in the past too. So I'm just gonna scoop. And I'm intentionally not being too, too careful about it. Like I'm not shaking it out very much. I'm trying to kind of get the top as flat as I can, but. Yeah, so that's 6.28 ounces, was that kind of like mounded cup was 6.28, which is a little much. <laughs> um, and that's going to make a difference. If you're baking something and you have too much flour, it's going to make it dry. It's going to make it not as flavorful, and it's probably going to throw off how fast it's going to bake too. Um, so I'm going to try the spooning and leveling way this time. So I've shown what that looks like a little bit in the past. Basically, I'm just pouring it in and shaking it out as I'm doing that. And that's a good way to make sure that the flour is filling like all the nooks and crannies of the cup too. Um, and that way that you know that it's like as close to exactly a cup as it can be. So yeah, so I did that spoon and leveled. 
spooned it. Now I'm going to level it off, which means just, you know, you can do it with a knife. You can do it with the edge of your spoon, which is what I'm doing. Um, and that will hopefully be more accurate. So we'll see. Yeah, that's 5.75 uh, ounces. So even that's different from the last one that I did. Um, and I'm going to even try and do that one more time to see if it ends up different. You know, King Arthur Flower may have lied too <laughs> on that 4.25, but... Yeah, so that was a pretty big difference, though. We went from, like, 6 point something to 5.75, and I'm going to spoon and flour this one more time and see how it comes out. And I'm doing it the exact same way I just did. Yeah, that's 5.36 ounces. So, like, you can even see right there, I did it the more accurate way, and it still came out, like, completely different by, like, you know, half an ounce, which is a decent amount when you're baking. That does make a difference. Um, so... With those two methods, you know, there's always going to be a little bit of error. There's always going to be a little bit off. Whereas if you're going by weight, you know, it's the same amount of flour, uh, no matter how far it's spread out. So like if I like very carefully dump it right in the center of the bowl, it's going to weigh the same as if I like, you know, sprinkle it everywhere, things like that. And it's a pretty good way to get a feel on, um, you know, exactly how much you're using it's just it's a lot more accurate uh because you know 4.5 ounces is 4.5 ounces versus like we saw even this full in pretty much the exact same way still had a margin of error with it all right so we're going to move on to one teaspoon of baking soda all right so we're going to move on to baking soda and i'm going to use that measurement for um the one teaspoon of baking soda how much it should weigh from this recipe that i use a lot which is my gingerbread cookie recipe um, and according to this it should weigh about 0.2 ounces so about 0.2 ounces so we'll see how accurate that is yeah that actually came out to like 0.23 so that one's a little closer um which makes more sense because number one there's a little bit less room to be off in a me uh, measuring spoon instead of a cup um, and also just the the weight of the baking soda is a little different from the flour that flour tends to be a little lighter for the same measurement um, and because it's more dense like that it's gonna hold together closer so it's still a little bit off but it's not as off I'm gonna try that one more time so I'm gonna tear and we'll see if those end up the same so that one was about what did I say? Ooh, like 0.22. All right. So this one, I'm going to try and be really, really accurate with the edge of it too. It's good enough. Yeah, that one came out 0.28, which I'm not surprised because it was spilled over a little bit. Um, so yeah, again, you see like it can be a different amount, even when you use the same measuring cup, like super close to each other, no matter how careful you're trying to be, um, it's going to be off a little bit. So I'm actually going to show you one last thing with the flour that just occurred to me now, which is the difference between using like one cup versus adding up to one cup with smaller cups. So this is a third of a cup. So three of these is one of these. We know fractions here. Um, so I'm going to show you even like just the difference because each time you do a scoop, it's adding a little bit of like margin of error to it. So we had the different measurements that came up um, that were like anywhere from like five point something ounces to like six point something ounces so i'm going to show you what happens if i try and do the same thing with a third of a cup and doing three because every time that you do it it's going to be a little bit different every time you do a scoop it can change it completely all right So yeah, that's 5.08. So that's different from what we got before as well. Um, and the reason for that too is, you know, if you do a scoop from the cup, uh, if it's a little bit over, it's going to just be a little bit over. If it's a little bit under, it's going to be just a little bit under. If I do a third of a cup and I do a little bit over, another one, a little bit over, another one, a little bit over, that's going to add up pretty quickly. Um, and the same with I'm doing a little bit under, that I'm going to be missing a much bigger amount or over a much bigger amount than if I was just doing one scoop overall. Um, so as much as like I'm guilty of using smaller cups to measure the big cups, I've definitely done it in these videos before, uh, mostly because I don't like doing dishes unnecessarily. Um, 
it does pay to be as accurate as you can with those measurements. All right, so let's talk liquids. Um, there are two different types of measuring cups that you've probably seen, which is this kind that I've been using and this kind. Um, they both measure the same amount. I had, I had someone uh, who was like 30 ask me once, and no shade if you don't know this. Um, this was a person who cooked a lot, so I was surprised. Um, but a liquid cup and a solid cup are both a cup. It's the same amount of stuff. That, it's the same measurement. Da, da, da. But uh, I just gave it away. This is a dry measuring cup. This is a liquid measuring cup. Um, this one has a spout that makes it easier to pour things like water, milk, oil, like whatever you're planning on using. Uh, the thing with measuring liquids is that you can use uh, a liquid measuring cup and it's probably going to be pretty close because, you know, water, water's water. Water weighs what water weighs. Uh, we know that with liquids, they take the shape of the container that they're in. Hello, science class. Um, so with that, there's less room for error. Like we have with the flour, there's like that opportunity for little air pockets and stuff like that, or for pushing it down too hard. Whereas like water is water, water is going to weigh the same amount. And even when you look at it, I don't know if how well it's going to show up on camera, but it says like one cup and then it says eight ounces. So, ooh. yeah, it's in there. Um, and then on the other side, it has milliliters as well, which was that unit that I mentioned on the scale. And that's the reason that I don't use that one too much is because usually when I'm doing um, things that are liquids, I end up using this measuring cup anyway because they're pretty much going to weigh the same amount uh, as well as, you know, like if I'm getting water from the sink, I can't put my scale in the sink, so I'm going to have to put it into something I can pour it into anyway, and I don't want to have to go back and forth and da-da-da-da-da, so I usually just measure it uh, at the sink and do it that way. It's much easier. All right. So the last thing I want to mention is uh, that there are different systems of measurement. Uh, we know that, I'm sure, if you've ever been in a math class or a science class, we know there's like Fahrenheit, Celsius, we know there's inches and centimeters, uh, meters and feet and yards and all sorts of things. And that applies to weight too, that, you know, we can measure our weight in pounds, we can measure our weight in kilograms, um, and even on a smaller scale. So I tend to use grams more than I use ounces on the scale because a lot of recipes that I use use grams instead because they tend to be older. Um, grams is a system that's used in a lot of countries, whereas ounces tends to be more of an American thing. Um, we, I'm not sure how much you know from science class too, but 16 ounces is a pound. Um, so you can measure in pounds if it's a bigger amount too. Like, you know, when you buy a bag of flour, they sell it in pounds. It's usually like a five pound bag or something like that. I have like a 30 pound bag from Costco right now. Who is that a mistake? But, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different ways to measure things. Milliliters, cause we know liters, like when you have a bottle of soda, that's two liters. Um, so a liter is half of that, and then milliliters are a measurement that's even smaller than that. That It's like a thousandth of a liter. So if I have like, you know, 250 milliliters, that's a quarter of a liter. So an eighth of like a two liter soda bottle. Um, and again, the weight is not going to change um, from that milliliters to uh, the, you know, cup measurement because liquids take the shape of the container that they're in and cup of water is still going to be eight ounces of water no matter where it's spread out as well. So I hope that was informative. Uh, I hope it's not too long. Um, but yeah, that's why I like measuring with weight. Uh, it's just a little more accurate. Um, there's less room for error. Um, again, you saw like with the baking soda, it wasn't as far off um, because A, it's a smaller amount and B, baking soda is a little more dense. Um, but with the flour, it was pretty off, even from like two scoops that were done the same way that were like 30, 40 seconds apart. Um, that being said, I do cook with measuring cups too. I have a lot of recipes that I don't have weight measures for, um, weight measurements for that, like my chocolate chip cookie recipe, I only have in, um, volume measurements. Uh, when I go home to see my family in Massachusetts. Uh, I don't usually bring my scale there because that's not really a conversation I want to have with the TSA. Like, why do you have a scale in your backpack? Uh, you know, I just like to travel with the essentials. Um, but yeah, 
that being said, both are fine, both are valid, both are good, both are going to come out pretty delicious. Um, it really only starts to be a problem with things like making, you know, candy and like pastry and stuff like that where the weight does affect like the moisture content and how long it's going to need to bake and kind of the more scientific side of it and how like different uh, ingredients interact with each other and set off different reactions. Like when I'm making pie, I almost always go by weight. Um, things like that. But yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, if nothing else, I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something today. Uh, yeah, that's the difference between measuring by volume and measuring by weight.